Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, let's take a look at an example problem. This is a race car problem. Uh, and in this problem, it says the following. A race car accelerates around an arc. Given the following, uh, the initial speed is zero, the final speed is 350 kilometers per hour, and the radius of that arc is 230 meters. Now, what they want us to figure out here is what is the tangential acceleration, the radial acceleration, when it's halfway around this arc, and then what coefficient of friction will keep the car on the track. All right, so we gotta think about the problem for a second. Let's see if we can draw it out. The very first thing you should always do is just draw it out. So here's our arc. Okay. The semicircle, we know that it is radius all. Now we have a car, and this is a top view of the car. So the car is heading around the track, like so. And it says that when it gets all the way to the end of this arc, it has a speed of VF. It's a little bit outside the frame there. We'll write it down here, VF. What we're going to have to figure out is what the tangential acceleration is, what the radial acceleration is at the halfway point. Okay, so when it's up there, what is it doing? Well, in the problem, they tell us that the tangential acceleration is constant the whole time. So acceleration at the beginning, acceleration there, acceleration at the end, at least the tangential acceleration is going to be the same the whole time. Okay, and to figure that out, let's go back to the kinematic equations. So the kinematic equations say the following. One of those equations is this, Vf squared equals Vi squared plus two times A times how far you've gone. Earlier we said that was delta X, but we can call that delta s in this case, right? How far have you gone delta s? All right, that equation looks pretty good. Why does it look good? Because we know this, right? That's our good old 350 kilometers per hour. We know this, that is zero. We're looking for a delta s. Do we have delta s? Sure. We know the radius of this arc. We know that it's going to go from there to there to get to this final speed Vf. And so we, in fact, do know delta S because delta S is going to be half of a circle, right? If you go all the way around the circle, it's 2 pi r. Half of a circle is just pi times r, OK? Since in this equation, we're just looking for acceleration, specifically tangential acceleration, and it's the same the whole way, we can pick any beginning point and end point we want. Let's start here is our initial point, here is our final point. And so now we can calculate a sub t rather easily. a sub t, and we just have to solve this equation right here, right? vi, that goes away, this thing is zero. Let's just cross that out, okay? What are we left with? We have a vf squared, And then we have to divide by two delta S, but we said delta S was equal to pi R. Okay. And now we have all those numbers. Now you have to do one more thing. You have to convert this to SI units since it's in 350 kilometers per hour. You gotta convert that to SI units. So let's do that. I did it earlier, what did I get? I got 97.22 meters per second. Okay, double check me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And so now if we plug in all these numbers, let's see what we get. So we've got 97.22 quantity squared. We're gonna divide by two, by pi, and then R is 
230 meters. Okay. Punch those numbers into your calculator and tell me what you get. Make sure you got what I got, which was, I'm looking at my whiteboard over there, 6.54 meters per second squared. Okay, that was a t. Let's think about how we're going to calculate a r. So as the car goes around, it is not only accelerating because somebody's pushing on the gas pedal, but it is also turning. And anytime you're turning, you are accelerating. This is what we call centripetal acceleration. So centripetal acceleration is given by this A sub R. What is that? It is V squared over R. Okay. That looks pretty good, but remember we're trying to calculate this centripetal acceleration up here at the halfway point. It's obviously going to change as it goes around the track, right? Here it's not moving at all when it first starts, centripetal acceleration is zero. It's speeding up, we're gonna get some value here, it's going even faster there, and so the radial acceleration, the centripetal acceleration will in fact change as it goes. All right, so we need to figure out V. How do we calculate this V up here at the halfway point? And the way we do that is we again go back to our kinematic equations. We can use this equation as long as we're careful about it. Okay, what is V? V squared equals the initial squared plus two A sub R times delta S for this halfway point. Okay. What is that? Well, VI is zero, so it's in less. We've got two times A sub R. Hmm, I think we made a mistake here, right? We can't really use A sub R here. We're looking for A sub T, right? We wanna know how fast it's going. So let's be careful about our subscripts. This is really tangential acceleration, which we already know. Okay, and then we have delta S. Delta S is how far did it go from there to there? Well, that is a quarter of a circle. Right? Two pi r to go all the way around, pi r to go half an arc. If I go a quarter arc, this becomes pi times r over two. And so what do we get for v squared? We get two a t pi r over two. The twos cancel out and we just end up with a sub t times pi times r. And I think we have all those numbers. And we can now plug it back into A sub R. So what do we get for A sub R? A sub R is equal to V squared, which we just said is A sub T pi R. And we're gonna divide by R. That's pretty cool. So this just becomes A sub T times pi. And now we know all those numbers, right? A sub t is 6.54. Pi is uh, 2.14, we'll just write as pi. And if I multiply 6.54 times pi, what do I get? Let's just try it real quick. I think I did this earlier. I got 20.5. Sounds about right. Six times three is 18, gotta add a little bit more. So this was 20.5 meters per second squared, okay? So the first part of the problem was just looking for that. What is the tangential acceleration? What is the radial acceleration? That should take care of that part. Now, what about the second part? The second part says, what is this coefficient of friction between the tires and the road? Obviously, 
the tires sticking to the road is what keeps the race car on the track, but also keeps it accelerating. And so when we think about the car up here at the top, let's redraw this. So we have the arc. And this is, of course, a top view of this track. And now we have the car right up here at the top. There are some forces that are acting on it. And those forces are causing these accelerations. But there's acceleration in this direction, which is a sub t. And there is acceleration in this direction, which is a sub r. And those are at right angles to each other. And so we have to be careful about the vector nature of that. So what do we do next? Well, we know that the sum of the forces has to equal the mass times the acceleration. But there's only one force which is keeping this thing on the track. It is friction, namely static friction. Okay? So this whole left side of the equation just becomes this, F sub S. Okay? But we know what F sub S is. F sub s is equal to mu s times the normal force, which is mu s times m g. Okay, that's the maximum that the static friction can be. And so now look what happens. Mu s simply becomes the m's drop out, and we get a over g. But what is A? A is the magnitude of the net acceleration. It is a vector quantity, right? And so we have to worry about adding these things up appropriately. If I have a vector to the right, A sub t, and I have a vector down, A sub r, where's A? It's right there. That's what A is. And this is a right angle. And so we know that A, according to Pythagoras, has to be the square root of AT squared plus AR squared. And now if we punch in all those numbers, let's see what we get. AT, we had 6.54. AR, we have 20.5. I'm going to square those and add them up. And when you do that, and then you divide by g, you should get a mu s that is equal to what? What did I get? Uh, I don't remember it like that. Let's just try it right here. Let's do this calculation first. Okay. So let's see if we can grab our calculator. We could try to approximate it, but this one's a little tricky. Okay, so 6.54 squared plus 20.5 squared equals that. Take the square root, and I get 21.5 meters per second squared. So what's mu s? Mu s is a over g. And so we're going to divide this thing by 9.8. And I get 2.20 for my coefficient of friction. So your numbers, of course, are going to be slightly different, but hopefully not that different. You should get a number that is around the 2 range for your numbers. All right. So that one was challenging, but doable. A lot of people usually have trouble with this right here. Instead of just sticking in one A or the other or adding them up linearly, you have to go back to the Pythagorean theorem and add them as squares and then take the square. All right, All right cool. Hopefully that's clear. If not, send me an email or come see me in office. All right, cheers.